Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. We have a 2003 Nissan Vivara. It's the same as the Renault, same as the Opel. They're all the same, just different badges. And we have a crank no start. This is a 2003 1.9. And we also have the engine light is flashing. So you see that? If I just make sure the customer's complaint is correct. Yep, crank no start. So, first thing we're going to do is plug the computer in and see. But I have noticed a few things. The battery maintainer is on at the minute because he was cranking and the battery went flat. You turn the ignition off. Don't know if you can hear that, but the fans kick in. Now that tells me something. Uh, also, what tells me a lot is we have two different keys here. One's to lock it and one's to start it. Now, what I mean by that is that I don't think the key fob buttons work, but one physically locks the doors and the other one goes in the ignition. These two keys are completely different um, keys, as you can see there. So, this also tells me this van has just been hacked at and not been looked after properly. This customer hasn't had it for long, but when you see things like that is you just know it hasn't been looked after properly and it's just been hacked at. So... Yeah, we could find anything on this, but I don't like seeing this. This is just this is just a hack job um, most of the times because you know the, there's better ways of doing it than different keys. But anyway, so we'll plug in the uh, scan tool and we'll see exactly what we've got. We're going to be using the little Autel for this, and this is no bi-directional controls or anything like that. And it was Dan who sent it to me. Thank you, Dan. Um, and we will see what codes we get. Right, and here's our codes. This is where a bit of experience comes in. We can see battery voltage, but that's a passcode, so we're not worried about that. We've got four of the codes. We've got an EGR valve, a water temperature sensor. Now, that's interesting because when we turn the key off, the, um, the fans kick in, which they shouldn't do. Fuel pressure and heater plugs. Now, um, with a little bit of experience, I can more or less say okay i'm not worried about the heater plugs for the no start in this particular case uh, and i'm not worried about the temperature sensor for the no start and i'm not really worried about the edr valve for the no start they can cause problems but they wouldn't really cause this problem as such normally an edr valve you have no power it might be smoking a lot and all sorts uh, the heater plugs it might be hard to start and you know stuff like that but the one I'm looking for first is I'm going to go straight for the fuel pressure. And the reason is because that's an important one. I'm not saying these others aren't important, but for the minute, I'm going to go for the fuel pressure just because that will definitely stop it. And from what the customer was telling me, he was just driving, no problem, all of a sudden, bang. It, you know, he got it in first, first to second gear and it just went bang. It just stopped, which normally would suggest fuel pressure. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into some live data and... We are going to see what we can read. We'll just go all, because again, it's important to see all. The most important battery PID at the top. Um, can we just, oh no, this is going to read them all. Okay, so for example, I press my clutch. So we know we're definitely communicating, because as I press my clutch, it's um, saying it's pressed. So that's okay. Let's go down here. The ignition is on. See if I see anything at the minute that looks um, a bit weird. Do, 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 do. Fuel pressure idle. Airflow meter. It's okay. Fuel flow. Control, uh -huh. hold on, we're getting somewhere now. The EGR valve, it's reading a percentage. See if that EGR valve changes if I crank it. Nope. Um. Feel temperature. Air temperature. I don't know what PIDs we have. Where is our fuel temperature? 
let me go through some of the readings here because I'm not happy with the, the fuel and I can't see the temperature sensor. Let me just uh, see if I can get some more data bids up. Right, I'm still getting used to this hotel, so uh, I just went into a different menu system and I've got what I needed. So I've just again selected all. And as we go down, look, boom, straight away. Our fuel pressure sensor is maxed out. Now, that tells me a couple of things. One, we've got a code for it, and it's going to be a three-wire sensor, and we know the car can see it, but essentially it's maxed out. So that only gives me really two options. Either the sensor is, is dodgy, you know, it's broken internally, or we've got an open in the circuit. You know, very, very quickly, no wiring diagrams, no nothing. Bang, I can tell straight away. And that's most probably our problem starting because the car is set to like a default mode so if the sensor breaks or if the if the wires comes off it goes to that to basically protect the car so in other words once the car sees that that amount of pressure it won't start because if the fuel pressure sensor or the fuel pressure regulator isn't working you know you can do a hell of a lot of damage to your engine so what the car manufacturers do they set that as a default strategy so it as soon as it sees it it says like bang we're not going to start um which is actually you know good for the car it's annoying because you break down but it's good for your engine and apparently on our 12 volt battery we're at 63 volts which is you know remarkably well for the battery it's doing it's doing very well and so is the whole electrical system our water temperature sensor is minus 247 degrees i know it's cold in ireland but it ain't that cold and our fuel pressure is basically the same so yeah We've obviously got a few issues here, and once I seen them two keys, that just rings alarm bells to me because every time I've seen that, there's always just dodgy things been going on. It's never really been looked after properly. Um, so what I'm going to go to first is the um, the fuel pressure sensor. Now, the fact that the um, the fact that, again, it's default strategy for the water pump, and that's why when I turn off the key, the fans kick in as a default strategy. But that shouldn't really stop us from starting because it's just going to mean the fans are going to be on. Um, fuel pressure, uh, fuel temperature, that's a possibility. It could stop us from starting. But what we need to do first is we need to go straight for the sensor here and see exactly what's going on and uh yeah go from there because that that is definitely stopping us from starting and we have a code for that we don't have the code for the fuel pressure or the, the fuel temperature um but we do have a code for that so that's the first thing we need to do so with no wiring diagrams no nothing special just you know a scan tool some live data um i'm going straight for that and that's why it's important to kind of understand your live data see what you're looking for and uh, go from there if you want to understand your live data more the easiest thing to do is when you get your scan tool no matter what scan tool it is plug it into your car now make sure your car is good there's no there's no problems with it then go through all the live data and see you know when the car is turned off what it should be when it's turned on when it's hot when it's cold and you do that for you know a few cars petrol and diesel you will start seeing what these values should be roughly and then once you start seeing a value like this bang you'll go to it straight away and you'll know because this essentially now should be zero when i start cranking it should go up to about 300 280 to 300 bar in and around there or say 280 to 350 bar as i'm cranking very very fast but it shouldn't be at 63,000, uh, you know 6380 bar so yeah i'm gonna go straight for that sense and let's see what it looks like See, as I take the keys out of the ignition, the fan just starts spinning and then it will actually stop. Now, already I can kind of see a lot of kind of oil and crap around the EGR valve. Uh, I can see a lot of the uh, conduit pulled off. Um, yeah, I mean, this just, you know... You see the likes of this has been added. I think that's not a bodge or anything, but you know, you just see the likes of all this and you just know that hasn't really been looked at 
the the bed. Oh, oh, ho. now look at this. We have problems here. So just normal tape around here, which I just absolutely hate. Look at this. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be doing a video on how to solder, and you know, because this. This, this all that all them holes there the water is just going to get into uh, that one's broke that one let's just give that a bit of a tug that one kind of seems like okay. no it's pulling out look at that I bet they've just let me take that tape off and see exactly what they've done this is just yeah a nightmare right just look at this they've just twisted the wires together and put a bit of tape over them and as you can see from the top one they haven't even put a bit of tape on them properly uh this is ridiculous so this is definitely some of our problem whether it's all our problem i don't know yet so i'm going to quickly join that broken wire together just to see what the sensor reads before we kind of go any further because i have a feeling we've got a, a few problems on this and i don't know exactly what the customer really wants to spend on it and how far he wants me to go um so we're gonna have to see so let me just quickly connect that the same way they've done it just to see if this will start or do you see might not start but let's see if the sensor starts reading back to zero which will be a good uh you know a good indication of uh, what's going on right all i've done is join that wire together i haven't done anything else i might have to reset the code the ignition is off let me just turn on Cut and see if that light's still flashing. Is it? No, this is going to start. Um, oh, well, having said that, though, maybe not. There we go. It started. Oh, hold on, it stopped. Aha, now it's starting and stopping. So we're getting somewhere now. The fan is still going off. This could be our fan problem now. But why aren't we reading pressure? Let me just reset that fault and we'll go from there. Right, so I have just erased the codes. Let's go back in. Okay, no codes detected. That's good. Let's go back to live data and see if our sensor has like reset itself. Because it is starting now, but it's stopping straight away. So it's better than what it was before. But is all the other issues now coming into play? Um, ha ha! Look at that. Zero. Perfect. It still could have been reading that and not liking it. Water temperature is still really cold. So we still do have a few more issues. Um, but... Let's see what happens. Start and stops. Right, we're we'll gonna have to look further. Right, I've just come back to the engine and this is what I've done. Like I said, this is not gonna be proper by any stretch of imagination. I just wanted to see if this was the issue. And I noticed that I took off this to get to the wires. So I'm just gonna stick the intercooler back on and now let's see if it starts could have just been the fact that that wasn't on because we've got no more error codes haha -ha! oh, oil lights flashing service lights on we're still still not a happy camper i just need to check the oil Fans are still going. We've still got issues, but at least now it's starting. Right, we've still got issues. Uh, it will start, as you've seen. But when I rev it up, it's struggling. Not only that, if I was to rev it up now, our typical, it's not doing it now. Just turn it off and turn it back on again. And you'll see the fan's still kicking in. And the fan is kicking in when the engine is starting. So there's still issues. But like I said, I don't know how far he wants me to go with it. Um, let's just look at that. It's just, again, that's not, doesn't look bad there. But 
That's EGR valve sticking, that is. Um, there's definitely an issue with the EGR valve. And again, I just don't know how far he wants me to go with it. So I'm going to have to ring him now because I had to put oil and everything in it. Um, yeah, I mean, I had to put over four litres of oil in it. There we go. It's just, it's struggling to rev up. It just struggles to rev up. Right, it sounds okay from here. Um, just looking at the wires. But the fan is kicking on. We're getting nothing really from the EGR valve. So it's going to give it a little, few little love taps. Wiggle the wires. Right, I haven't rang the customer yet, but as you can see, oh, let me just turn the ignition on. Right, we're just getting no control there whatsoever. I was giving it a few love taps and absolutely nothing happened. And then look what I spot, another broken wire. Uh, and I'm just suspecting the same on the temperature sensor, on the fan switch, just on everything. This is going to be a nightmare. Um, again, I can tell people have been at it. This is not factory um this wire is not only is it broke there it's all just cracked there look and it's broken right at the actual uh, pin itself you can see you can't oh you can just see it there i think so yeah um i really don't know if he's gonna fix this this is gonna be uh quite expensive to fix because we're gonna have to maybe get new connections or they deep in the connections and try and get yeah because there's just nothing to solder all these wires here they're just completely gone there's nothing really to i can't i can't solder them wires it's just yeah just a nightmare but that's why it's struggling to to rev up and also we're getting no codes for this now as soon as i have put that on we're getting no codes for the EGR valve, um, which again is weird considering it's missing one of its main parallel wires. So if I go to recodes, there's no 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 faults at all. Um, so yeah, let me ring the customer and see what he wants me to do. Right, I've just spoke to the customer. You can hear the fan still kicking in. Now he said, yeah, he's only he's only had this for a few weeks and he bought it very very cheap so that fan was always doing that so we we've just obviously had so many problems and the last problem was the actual fuel side of it which made it actually stop he also said that the temperature gauge doesn't work which would make sense because of the temperature we're getting so i'm again broken wire or dodgy sensor EGR valve broken wire I don't know if the EGR valve is good or not at the minute but what i'm going to do is i'm going to repair the uh, fuel sensor properly just so i know that that's definitely okay we're going to look at the egr valve and then we are going to look at the temperature sensor i don't know if i'm going to do all this in one video we'll soon see depends how long it is but i'm just going to repair that and i will be showing how to actually solder wires on another video on a bench because it's just too difficult to try and do it in an engine bay like this where you just can't see anything so once I've done all that, we'll uh, see where we go and turn the camera back on. Right, like I said, I will be doing a separate video. I've just put some liquid tape on there. I've also got some heat shrink and I'm going to end it off with some vulcanizing tape. And I'll show that on the bench uh, just a lot easier. And I've just found out that this van is going to Bulgaria. So <laughs> I have to make sure all this is good. I don't know if I'm going to put some vulcanizing tape on that thinking about it. Because if there's any issues, at least he'll be able to see exactly. If I put vulcanizing tape over that... You're not going to be able to see what's going on and it's going to be a lot harder to find. So I'm just going to wait for that to dry, put the heat shrink over and uh, start this. And I'll do separate videos on all the other problems. Sorted. Right, so let's just see if it's all still okay. Will it still start? There we go. Still starts. 
I don't like the way it's revving up. Uh, EGR valve is still bad. But again, we'll do that in another video. We'll also do the uh, temperature sensor because he says it's not reading temperature. Um, but did I see it go up? When you turn the ignition on, it goes up and then goes down, which is weird. So, that's for another video. You can hear the fans kicking. I'll just switch the ignition on so the fans don't kick in. So that's it. So look, hope helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, never forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted. Part two coming soon.